I just want to give you a little bit of a background for what I want to share uh, this morning because um, whenever you are whenever you, you are speaking um, to people and you're seeking God's heart to, to be released um, in a gathering like this um, you have to practice what you preach <laughs> You have to understand what you're saying. And so in a sense, you've got to go through the thing yourself. And that might be at a previous time. And that might be right in the very moment. You just never know. And some of the things I've felt the Lord uh, put on my heart to release, even over this past sort of six months or a year, have been really difficult. Most of the time, I'm saying, I don't want to do that. I don't want to say that. And and yet, uh, over this past sort of... Um, couple of weeks as I've been thinking forward to, to this time that we're moving into and, and we are in a time throughout this month of sort of a twin twin tracks happening at the same time we're going to have Tuesday nights and we're going to have Sundays um, and those are the times where, where we're going to have a word shared and so Mark's going to be dealing over the next uh, three Tuesday nights with sins wounds and demons inner healing and on Sundays I don't know what I'm going to be sharing, <laughs> but I know what I'm sharing this morning, and I know what the theme is over this next month, because God's already told me what that is, and he just gave me one word, and it was responsibility, and so we want to look at the truth of God's word about what that means, and whenever I felt God communicate that word to me, I thought, brilliant, I'm excited about this one, I can really hammer I mean, encourage the people <laughs> about taking their responsibilities. And I was starting to think about all of the ways. Now, don't get me wrong. There is a place for the responsibilities, those other responsibilities that came instantly to my mind. And we will cover those things in time. But I was saying, Lord, what is it? I need you to narrow this down. What is the message that you want to communicate? And on a Thursday morning... Um, some of us gathered in here for prayer and it was an amazing time and, and, and at one point Mark said maybe we should just sit I feel like God just wants to impart something to us maybe we should just sit in silence for a few minutes and almost instantly as soon as everyone just went quiet I just felt the Lord say rest and so I want you and me this morning to step into our responsibility to rest. <laughs> That's totally foreign from where I was going. So the first thing when it comes to responsibility and taking up this subject is that God wants us to rest. And so we're going to look at that this morning. Uh, if you want to turn in your Bibles to or your phones, or whatever you've got to, Hebrews chapter 4. This is the scripture that came instantly to mind, Hebrews chapter 4. And you know, I was saying about having to practice what you preach, and um, it's not easy, but you try and get into a bit of a routine in life, don't you? With all the busyness, and I know there, there's a lot of busy people in here with a lot of responsibilities in life and I knew that Sunday was coming and I knew that life was busy and with a lot going on and I thought maybe I could get finished up a bit earlier on Friday and maybe I could get a couple of hours there or maybe I could get a couple of hours sometime on Saturday and the week was busy right the way through and it came to Friday and um, and things just turned even more hectic there was people just phoned and said I'm in the area can I call in um, those are those are commitments that I had to uh, to keep with people because it was important and I kind of knew it was important and one after the other the phone rang and things happened that just meant that it was a really really busy day and they got no time and you see you have this this thought and this notion in your mind that uh, if I can if I can uh, put aside this time if I can um, put aside these finances if I can organize everything then then I'll be in control and I'll I'll have it all together and if if anybody ever gives you that idea from the front that's not the reality of life there are circumstances of life that come our way over which we have no control and so we're asked the question in the midst of it all who really is in control 
And I've said here a number of times before that us being in control is nothing but an illusion. Amen. It's an illusion. We're not in control. We might feel like we're in control. I've got my, my finances in order. I've got my home in order. I've got my insurance policies. I've got, I've got everything sorted out. You're not in control. Amen. So that was Thursday morning. Friday was busy. Right the way through. Friday evening, as soon as I got home, Mark phoned. He said, bro, how's your day? What's happening? Is there anything wrong? <laughs> I thought, I didn't like the sound of it. And no, it's, I mean, it's been a really busy day, but it's been a great day. Uh, he said, um, okay. I said, what about you? He says, oh, I've, I've been under attack today. I've had a, a number of different things happen, and I've been under attack. And within a few hours, um, I was round uh, at my aunt's house and she had passed away and we had all of that to deal with and it's just been one thing after another and there hasn't been a second and here I am. And everything within me wanted to just say, can somebody else look after Sunday morning? Can somebody else do that? I've got too much on, I can't do that. And yet the Lord said, no, <laughs> I want you to get up there. I want you to share because you're going to have to practice what you preach in this message and so we're looking at this subject in Hebrews 4 of rest the book of Hebrews is one of the most amazing books in the Bible it's such an amazing book the language that used the richness of the text um, right through but the theme of the book of Hebrews which came um, to the people at a time of real difficulty and trial is the, the sufficiency and the supremacy of Christ. And really just to put that in, in layman's terms, what the book of Hebrews is really saying to us is that Jesus is better. <coughs> Jesus is better than the, the Old Testament prophets. Jesus is better than the, the temporary sacrifices. Jesus is not just a high priest, but he's the great high priest. Amen. We see all of the uh, faithful people, the, the, the people of faith that uh, Sarai shared with us from Hebrews 11 last week. And yet Hebrews 12 starts with that Jesus is the author and perfecter of our faith. He's better. And the book of Hebrews goes on to talk about the kingdom of God, an unshakable kingdom that's better, that's superior than this kingdom. And so that's the theme right throughout the book. But I want to read um, a number of verses, starting from verse 1 in chapter 4, where the writer to the Hebrews, the author is unknown, and he takes up this subject of rest. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. Now, what's he talking about there? If you know the Old Testament, then you're probably going to be familiar with that, what that means, but some in here may not. And so what he's uh, harping back to is Joshua Moses before that and then Joshua leading the Israelites into the promised land and that was their promised rest and of course they come out of Egypt and all that that meant the bondage the slavery and uh, whenever we we read the text on the wall that the spirit of the Lord is upon me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim freedoms to the captives that has been God's heart right throughout and so he wants to see his people released from the slavery and bondage in Egypt and to step into the promised land, into all the blessings of God. And most of you all know the story that they are led out. Moses, Pharaoh eventually says, let the people go and, and they go. But then they try and chase them down and they're cornered and the Red Sea opens up and they pass through. And it's just miracle after miracle, provision after provision. But the grumbling starts. The complaining starts. 
God provides the manna from heaven. We don't like this bread. Oh. <laughs> it's constant. Moses goes up the mountain to hear from God. He comes back. What's happened? Idol worship. Five minutes later. That's human nature. Each one of us have little idol factories in us. That just can't wait to get started with that. Amen. And so... Rather than stepping into all the blessings of God, the people of God, the Israelite nation, walk, a lot of them, in willful disobedience to God. And so that leads to them being like what the New Testament talks about, sheep that are all laid astray. They're wandering about in the wilderness when they should be in the promised land. And so the writer of the Hebrews, that is what he is talking about. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, we're now in the New Testament. We're now in the new dispensation. Let us fear. Let us fear lest any should seem to have failed to reach it. For good news came to us just as to them. But the message they did not benefit the message did not benefit them because they were not united by faith with those who listened. Such language there that's used. There were those people of faith who listened to God. But there wasn't a unity among the people to step in by faith. Verse 3. For we, have be- for we who have believed enter that rest as he has said i swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest although his works were finished from the foundation of the world so what's that saying it's saying that god's heart was for the people to enter into rest just as he is at rest god is at rest Verse 4, for he has somewhere spoken of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in the passage he said, they shall not enter my rest. Since therefore it remains for some to enter it, and those who formerly received the good news failed to enter because of disobedience, (coughs) Again, he appoints a certain day, saying, Today, through David, so long afterward, in the words he already quoted, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Now, if you've been brought up uh, in an evangelical church in this land, you will have heard that verse quoted many times uh, as, as a kind of a gospel verse. For those who don't know Jesus, um, today... If you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Receive him. And yet, this word was given to the people of God. It's interesting, isn't it? Verse 8 says, For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken of another day later on. And so what, what he's speaking about here in the book of Hebrews is... Jesus is better, but he's also saying that there's a better rest that's been provided for the people of God. Not just a, a rest as they entered into the land and the step into those blessings. And it, it was for a period of time and the enemies came against them and they were exiled from the land and all of these different things. Everything was temporary. But the writer to the Hebrews speaks here and he says that there's a better rest for the people of God to enter into. Verse 9. This is where we see the conclusion is drawn in how he's communicating through this letter to the people. We get these two words, so then. As Aaron would say, I say all that to say. (laughs) That's what the writer to Hebrews is saying. I said all that to get to this point. So then, so then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. That is really good news. Amen. That's really good news. For whoever has entered God's rest 
has rested from his works as God did from his. So here's the key text for this morning. Verse 11. We got there eventually. Verse 11. Let us therefore strive. Now pick up that word. Strive. The word strive means serious effort. To strain, to struggle, to put serious effort into what? Strive to enter that rest. Is that countercultural in this day in which we live? If we're honest, is there something within us that that, that, that goes against the grain? Whenever we're anxious and we're stressed and we're worried, we, we like to feel like we're justified in that, don't we? Like, if somebody says to us, put your trust in God, rest in him, it's almost like, you know, you know I, I don't want to feel like I have, I have wasted all that worry whenever I could have been just resting in God. But that is what the writer to the Hebrews is saying. Whenever this word rest is used, don't think, and it can mean literally lying down and resting. But it means that we operate as believers in a different way from the rest of the world. Though everything that we do, if that is working and sweating, we do it from a place of rest. Do you understand what I mean by that? We are not striving like the world strives. Our responsibility is to enter into his rest. To struggle, to put serious effort into resting in him. Tomorrow, as uh, Phil said, I have the responsibility of taking my, my aunt's funeral. And it's the same message. Because we are laying someone to rest who has followed the Lord all of her life. And the thought is that, that she's entering into that place of rest. And has done. She's face to face with Christ her Saviour. Praise God. But that's not what the word of God tells us. It's not heaven when you die. That is glorious and that is amazing and that is where we we get to dwell in that place in a 100% rest with nothing coming against that and trying to stop us from that. But this moment that we live in right now, we are called to enter into his rest. And so is there a measure in which we're not living that way? Is there something and a process in which we can identify that in our life and saying, I'm not living in the very, in, in all the blessings of God that he has, has, that he has made possible in Christ. Jesus died to save us from our sin, to give us a home someday in heaven. But that's not at all. Eternal life starts as soon as you start following Jesus and are forgiven from your sin. In verse 11, the last word is, uh, so that no may fall by the same sort of disobedience. Okay, we can, we can listen to that word and disobedience. It kind of, it's almost like a word that takes us back to our childhood, doesn't it? <laughs> You're being disobedient. You can almost hear the, school teacher in primary school or something saying that but I want you to sort of reframe that for one for one little second because whenever we're disobedient to God this is this is what that really means it means willful rejection to step into all the blessings that Jesus has provided for us. His heart is to bless us. For us to live in a place of peace and joy and rest. His love shed, as Phil has shared, shed abroad in our hearts. 
that we live from that place. We are in the world, but not of it. And I don't know whether your background meant that that means that you don't go sort of out drinking and partying at the weekend. That's not what that means. It means that we live a completely different way from the world. It means that it is counter-cultural. We live from a place of rest. Why? Because our Father is really, really good. And I, I think, I know some of you because I've been speaking to you. And I know in my own life that's why I can speak about this. What it's like to be tired and to be burnt out. And to be worried about the future and have cares and anxieties. and Those are sometimes sins. And I'm going to call them what they are. They're sins. <laughs> but they're, again, they're the ones that we want to justify. Davy Legg calls it, and he did a series one time on sins that we have sanitized. <laughs> sins that we have, we have cleaned up and made them. But that's okay. But, you know, because... My my mum, she was a warrior and, and I'm a warrior too. You know, that's the kind of thing we do. Like, let's not do that. <laughs> let's rest in the Lord. So what 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 does that mean? What does that mean? Jesus says to us in Matthew eleven these words Come to me. All who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. What does that speak of? Living a different way. It's not the yoke of this world. Take my yoke upon you. And learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find, what? Rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We have, because God has said it, a responsibility to rest. And that is what God wants to communicate with every one of us this morning. That we operate from that place. We live life in the spirit, filled with the spirit of God and resting in him. And so if we think that there is something that we can do to make that happen, (laughs) there's not because the striving and the struggling is against everything that wants to derail us from that and to get us back on that track of worrying and stressing and anxiety and cares of this world. And God's word says, cast all your care upon me. Cast it all on me. And so there becomes one responsibility and that is to have our lives hidden with Christ in God. Our responsibility is to him to be uh, the, 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 the mum, the dad, the brother or sister, the, the business person, whatever, fill in the blank. Whatever your responsibilities are in life, your responsibility is to him. And then everything else works its way out through that. Amen. To seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And all the other things, all the other things will be sorted. When we seek for something... Where do we look for? That's what Dallas Willard puts it this way. He says, when you're seeking for something and it's something important, where do you look? You look everywhere. And so we as the people of God live life in the spirit, knowing that we have been invited by the blood of Jesus into the kingdom of God and we live life from that. See, there's a distraction. (laughs) Don't worry about it, it's fine. And thank you, Sarah. And I 
and I'm finished. <laughs> That's what I am, I'm finished. Um, I, I just know that this is something that the Lord's wanting to deal with in this place. Is um, all of those areas in our life that we're not at rest and he wants to deal with them because he's so good yeah. and <coughs> the only thing that's stopping that work of the spirit in our lives is us because God is a perfect gentleman and the Israelite nation got to make choices and that meant that they wandered for 40 years when they didn't have to do that it wasn't going to take 40 years to get there but that's what happened and so we have a choice this morning we can continue to wander we can go on the same cycle where we're up and down and we're, we're, we're trying our best and then we're flattening our face again or we can just admit that that's not really working and we need to do something about it and over these next few weeks I believe that God is going to deal with those things and I feel like there's a hunger and an appetite here which is such a blessing to be honest with God and with ourselves about those things and know that none of us have got it sorted out none of us have it right none of us are the finished article and we are to daily sanctify ourselves and that's why when, when the writer of the Hebrews talks about today, today if you hear his voice, harden not your heart, it's because tomorrow that will be the word. Today, the next day, today, today, today. Every day we get up, we enter in, we live differently as the people of God. So let me just pray for us now as we finish. Lord, I thank you for how your heart is displayed through the information that we read in the book of Hebrews. That your heart right throughout the word of God is has been for, for your people. Firstly, it was the nation of Israel. And, and then as we read in, in, in Hebrews 4, it was the people of God. And that's us. To enter your rest. And God we don't want to fall short of all of the blessings. All of the spiritual blessings that we have in Christ Jesus. We don't want to be believers in Jesus. And, and trusting you for salvation. But living life bound and in and, and a place of imprisonment from fear and worry. Mm. We don't want to be striving through life thinking that we are making everything happen when you've told us very clearly to strive to enter your rest. And so God, in these moments, would you help us? Would you help us by the power of your spirit to touch each one of us deeply in those places, those places that we're not even aware of because a lot of what we go through and how we live life is some of it's taught and some of it's even caught. We've just always done it this way. We don't even, we don't even know another way. And yet your word says Come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden. Take my yoke upon you. So God, we, we ask that this, that this moment right now might even be a line in the sand moment for each one of us. Where we say, God, help me. God, just take that yoke off me. Jesus, place your yoke 
around my shoulders because your yoke is easy and your burden is light and we find rest for our souls in you and so God this morning we speak to our souls we speak to our souls and we say soul be at rest be at rest soul because our faith and our trust is in you Lord and your promises are true we can't see a single time God when you've let us down when you haven't been faithful to your promises in these moments God if, if there's areas in our life that need dealt with God would you touch them and would you bring healing We thank you Lord for so much healing that's already happened in this place yes. <clears throat> and that journey for us for every single one of us is not over because that moment that moment that we trusted you Lord we <coughs> started in a process of daily sanctification and so God we simply say continue that in our lives make us more like Jesus for your glory Amen